this is our biggest unresolved mystery yet. Ten years ago, my dad found pieces of a Viking Age sword when he was metal detecting in a forest in Finland. Last year, I went to the same place looking for the main part of the sword, the blade, which is still missing. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I just need one big strong signal here. Where is it? I couldn't find it that time, but I have now done a lot of research and today we're gonna discuss some new theories, evidence, how did the sword end up in the forest, why, where is the rest. Okay, let's roll some clips from last year's metal detecting hunt. Let's roll it. Boom. Ouch. Now that we have seen that cinematic masterpiece and know what the landscape looks like, let's talk about where in the world are we. We are on a till-covered spruce forest right on the coast of the Gulf of Finland. We reach the target area now. As you can see, it is right next to the sea. That's the Finnish bay. During the Viking Age, the water would have been two and a half meters higher. It would have been an excellent topographical high feature in the landscape. The Gulf of Finland is in the Baltic Sea, which Vikings were the masters of 1000 years ago. I have a special connection to the sword because I grew up on the shores of Finland and my DNA genetic test tells me that I have Viking ancestry. What did my dad find then? Let's talk about that next. In an area about 25 times 25 meters, he found several interesting metallic items. The highlights being the two confirmed pieces of a sword. The pummel which sits on the top of the sword next to your hand and possibly a second piece of the pummel or the handguard that protects your hand from blows. My dad remembers that he found the items right about here and uh, they were about 10 meters apart. I have this excellent book that I get all my information from Vikings in War by Kim Yardar and Vegard Vike. So we're gonna discuss the sword details in detail. <laughs> wordplay in a little bit but uh, let's have a look at what else he found in in that strange place these items were very shallow five ten centimeters down and they're some kind of metallic copper alloy and it's very hard to tell what they are you can see that some of the pieces have holes in them like this guy and that guy and some rivets here and there this piece is bent and a uh, very peculiar item is the ring in the top right corner. Is it a finger ring or is it something else? The sword pieces were about 10 meters apart. Why were they apart? By now you should have figured out that I'm a big Viking nerd. So every now and again I have a look at these sword charts here, how Viking swords evolved throughout the Viking Age. And by looking at that, we can compare the sword pummel my dad found with the ones in the chart. And they mostly remind us of the U or the T type. They were around mainly during the 900s into the early 11th century here. Before this pummel came into fashion, it was more triangular, simpler pummels like up here and after our sword we are mostly into these straight pummels, weird shaped pummels, crescent ones. But I think it's a U or a T type 
which places us in the 10th century. Oh, oh man, that's an old sword. That's an old sword right there. It's one part of the pommel and one part of the handguard, which means that the whole blade is still missing, possibly another part of the pommel or the handguard. Some of the blades have inscriptions like Ulfberth, which probably gives the blade magical properties. If you squeeze your eyes a little bit, you can possibly see some lines on the pommel right here and there, or maybe it's just my imagination, but it would certainly fit with this image here. And if you have a really, really close look, you can see a droplet of silver on the top left side of the pommel. And look at this image again with all the silver wiring. This probably means that the intact original pommel had some silver wiring and it's been placed in a fire and the silver has melted. Otherwise, how do you get silver droplets like that? Oh man, have a look at this Ulfberg picture again. Ooh, this could be what we are missing. It's gonna be out there. Ooh, I'm so excited already for next true Viking season. We have so many awesome places to visit and historical stuff to find. It's hard to imagine what the area looked like a thousand years ago. Was there any forest back then? I don't know. But one thing that I know that doesn't change is the topography. Rocky, small, ridges, right next to the sea. In the Viking times the sea levels were 2-3 meters higher up at this place than what they are now. And this would have been a very nice little topographical feature sticking out in the landscape. A perfect place for perhaps a burial or just landing your boat, coming ashore having a barbecue sm snack there in the evening, getting drunk, losing a sword or two. But metal detecting here is very tricky because of something I discovered last time. Let's have a look at this clip from last year. Here we go. This rock is called a Rapakevi granite. And in this particular region, it seems to contain a little bit of magnetite. And as we all know, magnetite is magnetic and it will affect my metal detector. It's beeping everywhere. So I have to, to decrease sensitivity a little bit. Those metallic fragments that my dad found all over the place, could they possibly be pieces from a scabbard like this one here in my book? And maybe the ring would also fit there if it is not a finger ring. I'm not sure, could also be a cooking pot or drinking vessel. And you should also subscribe now, so you will eventually get the notification of me holding the Ulfbert's blade when I find it. Theory number one, did someone drop the sword by mistake? Well, I don't think it's likely that you would just lose it or forget your sword there. And also the silver droplet indicates that it's been in a fire, so it has burnt. Seems a little bit deliberate for me. I'm gonna call that theory busted. Let's move on to the next. Is it a burial? Is there a dead viking laying around there somewhere? Possibly. Maybe. When they used to bury people, they would destroy the blade. They would break it, twist the blade so that grave robbers couldn't come back and steal it and maybe some kind of symbolism there that the owner died, the sword died as well. So maybe there is a bent sword somewhere out there. Someone would have grabbed the blade and thrown it further up into the forest or in the sea. Theory number three. Did someone just take apart the pommel, the handguard and kept the blade? Maybe for repairs, maybe for selling. Possibly, maybe there is no blade, maybe there is. Well, leave a comment below which theory you think is correct. Or maybe you have another theory. I would love to read about that. 
this far we have mostly been randomly detecting the area a little bit here a little bit there and it's very tricky with all that magnetite in the ground we have to establish a grid pattern and detect every single square centimeter and also go within throwing distance as far as you can throw a blade so i don't know maybe an area of a uh, 100 meters 150 meters and we have to just go deeper put on the big coils dig every single target even if it is magnetite rock there's only one way and it's the hard way another equipment i would like to try there in the area is a deep pulse induction detector and we're gonna get one of those for some meteorite hunting this summer we're gonna look for big iron meteorites those videos will also start appearing in a couple months but the challenge in this particular location is the magnetic rocks in the ground but uh, we have to try it at least i owe that to my ancestors thank you guys see you in next week's video true vikings over and out thor's hammer go mjolnir